if you pride yourself on positional authority, if you pride yourself on being seen as right, if you pride yourself on getting the last word, a part of what you are going to have to accept as being the leader is there will be times where you can actually not get the last word. My name is Dr. Erica Jordan Thomas, and welcome back to the Seven Figure Educator Podcast. So I am a former teacher, former principal, and Harvard grad, currently a full-time entrepreneur running my Seven Figure Education Consulting business. So during today's episode, I wanted to have a conversation around the Catch-22 of Leadership. The reason why I thought this would be a great topic for us to have a conversation about is because In this entrepreneur space, I meet tons of entrepreneurs and many of them for the first or maybe second time in their careers, they're managing people. Managing people is not easy and people are having experiences in their business of managing teams where they are finding the tension of leadership. And if you don't know the tension of leadership, it's really easy to judge yourself for the natural experience of running a business, being a CEO and managing a team. So that was the purpose behind today's conversation. And when I think about the catch 22 of leadership, there are three specific catch 22s that I wanna dive into. But first, let's actually define what a catch-22 is. I don't wanna assume that we're all on the same page and what we mean by catch-22, so let's start there. So the formal academic definition, I'm an educator, so I'm gonna give you something from the dictionary. Catch-22 is a problematic situation for which the only solution is denied by a circumstance inherent in the problem or by a rule. The circumstance or rule that denies a solution. So when I hear catch 22, I hear that I'm picking the best out of the worst options. When I hear catch 22, I'm thinking I have to choose between Ross or Forever 21. Like they both ain't solid options, but I have to choose, right? So when we're talking about the catch-22 of leadership, these are the things where I, I, another way I think about it is it is the back end of leadership. It's the things that people aren't talking about. It's the nuances. It's the really, really tricky experiences that are given when you're the leader. So as I've been thinking and reflecting over my own leadership journey, if you don't know my story, I was previously a principal. I actually became an assistant principal at 24. I became a principal at 28. I have my doctorate in education leadership from Harvard Graduate School of Education. So I have formally and academically studied the art of leadership. So I say this to say is that I have a very deep repertoire and understanding for the art and science of leadership. And a part of leading teams, a part of being the leader is that there are are tough situations that are just going to be a given and you're going to have to accept it as the leader. So I wanted to talk about three examples of these catch 22s of leadership out of the spirit of normalizing the experience as a leader such that not if, but when they happen to you, you know how to recognize it as this is just a part of the leadership game rather than thinking there's something wrong with you. So let's start with the first one. The first catch 22 of leadership is accepting that there will be times when you will not be able to get the last word. So if you pride yourself on positional authority, if you pride yourself on being seen as right, If you pride yourself on getting the last word, a part of what you are going to have to accept as being the leader is there will be times where you can actually not get the last word. 
that is actually not in the best interest of your company. It's not in the best interest of your culture. It's not in the best interest of your reputation to get the last word. So let me give you an example. And this is a throwback example from my time as a principal. I led a beautiful, beautiful, amazing school community, over a thousand students, and I had a staff of 115. So your girl was leading, okay? Had a solid, solid, massive staff and team. And I remember it was the end of the school year. There was a staff member that I had an end of year conversation with. And the end of year conversation was regarding my decision to not bring them back for the next school year. And of course, during that conversation, gave them feedback as to why this wasn't the first time that we were having conversations around this specific feedback, but it had led to this decision. And obviously the person was not happy about it, right? Like I would not expect someone to be happy with the news that their employment contract was not being renewed. So had the conversation, the person left my office and I went about my business. It's one of the last days of school. There weren't kids in the building and I go about my day. I sit down at my desk, I open my email, and I see at the top of my inbox is an email from this staff person. And it was an all staff email saying goodbye and sharing that Miss JT made the decision to not bring them back for the following school year. In this moment, I'm like, huh, okay. The personal side of me kind of felt like I was being put on blast, honestly. The human side of me understood that they were making this decision, taking this action out of emotion, that that emotion could have been hurt, that emotion could have been grief because they're leaving a staff and community that they had been a part of. Lots of emotions underneath that, right? And my ego wanted to respond. My ego wanted to tell my side of the story. My ego wanted other people to know that I made the decision for a reason, that I believe and felt and still believe to this day that that decision was in the best interest of kids, my ego wanted to respond. And the reality was I could not respond. Because for what, <laughs> right? And part of this is what I'm sharing around the Catch-22 of leadership is that was an example in which I could not get the last word. I had to be okay with the other person telling their story, telling their narrative, and that being the leading narrative, whether I agreed with it or not. And so I think the nuances of this particular situation is that it was a staff member, it was an HR issue, and the reality is, is as a leader, I don't have the time and capacity to play what I call whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole is literally, I don't know if y'all remember the game at the arcade where the little moles just pop up and you got this big like pillowy hammer and you're like trying to like hit every single whack-a-mole before it goes down in the hole. And if you are led by your ego and you feel committed to getting the last word, you will find yourself in a game of whack-a-mole where you're literally trying to hit and tap out every single narrative when it's a waste of time. It's a distraction. So you are going to have to be okay with not getting in the last word. And also understand that if you are authentically leading from your values, if you are building deep relationships in your company, with your staff, with your team, you will have to understand that people nine times out of 10 will know the truth. So that's the first of three examples of the Catch-22 of leadership. The second example of the Catch-22 of leadership is understanding that as a leader, you make hiring decisions. And a part of the catch-22 of leadership is understanding that as you increase your team, as you grow your team, as you increase in the number of hiring decisions that you make, the percentage of error is gonna increase. That there will be a bad hire. There will be someone who you bring upon your team who will not be a fit. 
You can do all of the due diligence that you can do. You can interview well, you can onboard well, you can ask all of the right questions. And as your team and company grows, the reality is, is out of 100 people that you hire on your team, it is not a realistic expectation that all 100 are gonna be a fit. You are gonna have an experience of someone not being a fit for your team. And under that is also understanding that there are great people who also make bad employees, right? And being able to separate who you are as a person is different than the value add that you add to my company. So it is possible for you to be a great person that I would love to have drinks with. You can also be the person who gets on my nerves and I cannot stand you working in my company because you're a bottleneck, right? Those can be the same person. And so I think the challenge behind understanding that for us as leaders is knowing that when you make hiring decisions, when you're making decisions on who to retain on your team, the human emotional side of you is going to want to make the decision based upon likability. And making decisions based upon likability is a sure way to lose money in your business when in reality, the, decision, the leading decision-making factor needs to be the value in which you're adding to the company. And that comes down to the bottom line of performance. Is that the only thing? No, because vibe matters. Are you adding a vibe to the company? But vibe is not the only thing that matters. I want to move on to our third and final catch-22 of leadership. We've already talked about our first two of you will not always be allowed to get in the last word, that great people can make bad employees, and third and finally, that there will be moments as a leader where you will experience chaos and you will be required to be the calm. And it is going to feel really unfair that you cannot listen to yourself, that you're not gonna be able to honor how you're feeling in the moment, because the reality is, is as the leader, people look to you for direction and protection. And in looking towards you for direction and protection, when you are in the midst of chaos, direction and protection means I have to be anchored and calm in order to be clear on what is the best next step. So even though in internally, my mind and my brain might be wanting to just go run and hide, I actually need to be anchored. And an example of this is when I was a principal, I had to lead lockdowns <laughs> as a school. And if you are not familiar with what a lockdown is, it is when someone gets over the intercom and says lockdown and everybody in the building has to lock down, meaning they have to turn off the lights, close the door, cover the windows, lock the door, and push to the furthest side of the wall opposite of the door. This is a drill that we run in preparation for a crisis. A crisis could be violence, it could be danger in the community, in the neighborhood, in the school, you have to lock down. And as you can imagine, the natural reaction when you hear the word lockdown can be anxiety, it can be fear. And as the leader of a school of over a thousand kids and over a hundred staff members, I had to be calm in the midst of chaos because people are looking towards me for direction and protection. Now, did that mean that after the lockdown, I wasn't like all frazzled and needed a moment? Like, yes, and I took my, myself, I gave myself that moment. But in the moment, I had to be clear, focused, calm, action plan, what's the next step? How do I keep everybody safe, move and execute? And then I will acknowledge the chaos and how that is activating me when I can ensure that all of my people are safe. So it is my hope that when you think through these three examples, and I'm sharing three of many different examples of the Catch-22 of leadership, that you feel some affirmation. Because if you as a leader don't have moments that push you and test you as a leader, are you really leading? If you don't have moments where you feel like you don't have the best option to choose from and all the options, quite frankly, are just shitty, that's leadership. 
And the opposite choice that you have is to play small. And you're making the decision every single day to play big, to lead your team, to lead your company towards a, a greater vision. So those are three examples of the Catch-22 of leadership. And it's my hope that when you hear those three of many different catches of the 22s, that you feel some affirmation that you're doing something hard because when you do hard things, then there comes some catch-22s with hard things, right? Because here's what I know is that when you're playing small, you're not being pushed. When you're playing small, it's easy. And so we have the opportunity to reframe the catch-22 of this is what comes with playing big. This is what comes with running a company. And you could either choose to play big, run your company, build your company, and with that comes a catch-22, or play small, have small impact, have small outcomes. So thank you for joining me on the 7 Figure Educator Podcast, and I look forward to having you join me on the next episode. 